And let's loosen up the waist. Now, bring your feet together, we'll loosen up the knees. Change direction. And now let's do the ankles. Change direction. Now the other foot. Change direction. Okay. Ah. Ah. Let's start off with lung cleansing qigong. We stand with our feet about hip width apart, hands on the lower abdomen. We're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. We're going to put our mind in the exhalation, so that is maybe more simply explained, we put the oomph in the exhalation and then when we inhale, when we just inhale, we don't emphasize it. <laughs> okay. We're going to exhale and bend forward three times and as we bend forward, we're going to imagine we're pushing the front abdominal wall against the back abdominal wall, but we're not actually going to try to do that. We're just going to push in uh, moderately. 
And then we're going to straighten up, inhaling through the nose. After the third time that we bend down and exhale through the mouth, we're going to come up and we're going to bend slightly backwards like this. We'll inhale as deeply as we can and we'll hold for as long as we can. And when we can no longer hold the breath, well, when you can no longer hold your breath, we're, we're not in a uh, group situation here where we have to go by <clears throat> uh, everyone together. When you can no longer hold your breath, round out your mouth, straighten up, and breathe out all the impurities from your lungs. Okay, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll do five repetitions of that. <coughs> so inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, mind in the exhale. Inhale through the nose as we straighten up. Bend down, exhale through the mouth. Come up, inhale through the nose. Bend down, exhale through the mouth. Now, straighten up, inhale as deeply as you can, hold for as long as you can. Bend slightly backwards. And we'll rest for a minute to regain the breath. And you're ready. We'll go again. Inhale through the nose. Bend down, exhale through the mouth. Straighten up, inhale through the nose. Bend down, exhale through the mouth. Straighten up, inhale through the nose. One more time, bend down. Straighten up, inhale as deeply as you can, hold for as long as you can. Notice what happens when you inhale, bend slightly backwards. The air goes into the back of your lungs. That's a very good for cleaning out the lungs because the bronchial tubes are in the front of the lungs. So the front of the lungs are what get used the most. And sometimes they get irritated, they get too young. And so inhaling with the shoulders back helps to cool down the front of the lungs helps to relieve things like asthma. Okay, here we go again. Inhale. 
Exhale, imagine pressing your front abdominal wall to your back wall. Inhale. Exhale. In. And out. Inhale, up and hold. Pressing or imagine pressing, pressing the front abdominal wall to the back wall. That helps to empty the lungs, of course. You can probably feel that effect as you bend down. So that helps um, to more fully empty the lungs. Okay, here we go again. Inhale. Exhale. In. Out. In. Out. In, up, bend back, and hold. So in case you don't uh, know it, and you're blessed if you don't, um, we're already into fall allergy season. It usually starts about the middle of August. Yeah, so uh, used to be when I lived in Ohio, I could tell you the 15th of August. You could put me in a darkened room for weeks and I could tell you, okay, today's the 15th of August because the allergies would start like clockwork. Down here, it's a little earlier. Okay, one more time. Inhale through the nose. Bend down, exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth.
and inhale, bend back and hold. Okay, <coughs> that is a very good qigong exercise for the lungs. It works very well. Oftentimes, at the end of the exercise, you'll be able to expel some flammer things from the lungs. Um, and if uh, you have uh, lung problems uh, twice a day is a good uh, um, routine for this uh, exercise. It only takes about, uh, well depending on how long you can hold your breath, it only takes about 10 minutes. Now it takes longer than that when we're teaching that and when I'm a little short of breath because of, well we walked two miles already this morning outside so allergies are acting up but uh yeah it's very effective and it's from master leon let's do a little white crane she go <clears throat> and we'll start with the swimming octopus Remember, swimming octopus, pull the fingers back, open up the palm, and then pull the fingers forward and stretch the wrist. There's no yin and yang to this, so your breathing pattern can be either way. And remember the protocol for injury or arthritis if you have the wrist uh, arthritic or injured, then do gently. But if your wrists are okay, then you can add more muscular force to stretch the muscles and tendons more. Okay. And of course, you can do the sitting down, in which case you would not have your whole body moving. You would just be moving from the uh, uh, seat up. But if you're standing up, then generate this movement from the bottoms of your feet and have the whole body moving. So. And you can also do it forward and backward, like this. Kind of have to be careful who's around you when you do that because people may think you're hexing them or something. Yes, it takes all kinds.
And I've told you uh, the story of Henry, a uh, big Chen Chinese guy that uh, met in Boston years ago. He was from North Carolina, I think. He was doing Tai Chi in a empty space next to uh, some houses, and the police pulled up. <laughs> Let's do the downward dropping. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Same deal with the wrist, gently if you have injury or arthritis. So Henry's doing Tai Chi, and the cops pull up, and they get out, and they go over to him, and they said, we got a call from someone in the neighborhood that there's a strange man making strange gestures toward her house. And I'm like, <laughs> so, Henry says, I'm, I'm doing Tai Chi. And the, the officers fortunately were cool uh, and said, yeah, okay, we'll go tell the woman um, not to worry about it. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, so yeah, it takes all kinds. So this is downward dropping. Oh, this has a yin and yang. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned at the beginning. Inhale and exhale, because this has a martial application. This is the training that you need for a small wrap hand. And when you can connect the whole movement from your root to your fingertips, it becomes very powerful. So but also very useful if you can connect your body's movements from your feet to your fingertips becomes useful for all kinds of everyday tasks. Like opening a stuck jar lid. And if the jar is really stuck, use grand circulation. I'm not kidding, it works. And one more. Downward dropping. <laughs> okay. And let's do up and down spreading. So upward spreading. Like this. Downward spreading, like this, okay, and then after we do a few of these, we'll do up and down spreading with uh, the hands going in different directions. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. In and out. In and out. So we get a nice stretch, a nice range of motion from White Crane, but uh, White Crane is supposed to be relaxed. So don't do that, okay? <laughs> Nice stretch, but not extreme stretch. Because white crane soft qigong is supposed to be healing. Healing the uh, micro tears that uh, would occur in the ligaments and tendons and muscles of the white crane kung fu martial artists. During their Gong Fu training, their martial training. And um, if you're comfortable with four gates breathing, you can also do four gates breathing with this one.
one more up and down. Okay, now the other variation up and down spreading like this. So notice how the back of the hands here and then and then like this. That's so nice. Okay. The idea is to be as loose and flexible as possible. And of course, we're inhaling here and exhaling here because this also has a martial application. You imagine somebody pushes you with two hands right here about solar plexus level. You split the push. And then you kick them. <laughs> okay. So. okay. Very effective technique. If you can train your reactions so you react in time, somebody tries to shove you and suddenly they find themselves wide open and totally vulnerable. Gives them a nice change of perspective. Okay, so up and down spreading. Then we have the um, arm flapping. So let's first do downward flapping. So downward flapping will look like this. And now we don't have a yin and yang. So you could inhale here and exhale here, or you could do the opposite, okay? I'm getting a nice stretch, but not extreme, okay? So not to tense, just a stretch. And as you practice, of course, over time, you'll be able to stretch farther and farther without tensing.
Okay, now we'll do um, upward spreading. So from here, we're going to go like this. And now, sideways spreading. So notice how each of the three different positions give you a little bit different effect. Because sideways spreading now, you have a different feeling in the chest than you had with the upward and with the downward. So, nice sort of lateral stretch. So very good for the um, organs of the chest and the muscles to promote C certain chi circulation in the chest area and the heart and lungs. One more. Okay. So, white crane uh, neck goal. We're going to isolate the cervical spine and move it in as big and soft a wave as is comfortable. So, there's seven vertebrae here, and what I'd like to feel is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is, or actually it's seven, six, five, four. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Like this. Now, yeah, the whole body's connected, but remember that up to the base of the neck, the movement is very small. But yes, it, you should feel the movement starting in the root, like everything else. But the movement has to stay small because if the movement were big, you could give yourself whiplash. So, small movement. Very soft and slow. Now, there's no prescribed yin and yang for this. However, uh, in my feeling, there's only one way you can breathe. You have to exhale 
as you're doing this because I just can't inhale as I'm doing this. As I'm moving my neck forward like this, I find it impossible to inhale. So I don't know, maybe it's just me, but this has to be exhale and then inhale. Now, very carefully and gently, we turn the head to the side, keeping the shoulder square to the front. Gradually then, we'll come back to center and we'll turn to the other side. And we'll come back to center. All right. That's a great exercise for the neck. Of course, if you feel the discomfort or pain, then you need to back off, not turn too far, not move too much. Um, Naturally, this one is an unusual movement. We don't use our necks as uh, much anymore in modern life, except to hold the head up and sit still. So they get stiff. It takes a while for that. It takes a lot of work, actually, to get that stiffness out of there. So be careful as you do this, not to overdo it any one time. Work up gradually, but this is very nice. Okay, now we got the white crane flying goal. So all that we did up to now was called stationary, and now we go into the flying mode. So flying mode, um, we have all these different wing patterns, some of which look like white crane, some of which look like, I don't know that a crane would do that. <laughs> so, uh, and with the, with the uh, white crane flying, you can have three different postures. So one posture would be with the feet even standing still. Then you could have the rocking posture. And you could also have stepping posture, okay? It's like Tai Chi ball in that regard, that uh, you can do rocking, walking, or stationary. Let's start with the, the um, backward circling. Backward circling looks like this. So if we do double wing backward circling, it looks like this. And you're saying, well, that's Tai Chi ball with no ball, uh, vertical under and circling. And that would be accurate. But we will depart from Tai Chi ball patterns in a bit so you see the difference. There's no yin and yang, so you can breathe in either direction. But of course, in Tai Chi ball, there is a yin and yang. So this would be inhale, and that would be exhale. So you may have that habit that's hard to depart from, from Tai Chi ball. Backward circular flying.
Notice here how hands relax, fingers drop, wrists relax. And we can enlarge the size of the movements. Like Tai Chi Ball, we have a restriction. We don't bring the hands up um, uh, higher than the shoulders because you bring them up higher than the shoulders, you tense your muscles here, and then uh, for martial arts consideration, you expose the rib cage. And uh, that's not a good habit. You never you want to you don't want to create that feeling of oh yeah it's okay to expose the rib cage. So shoulder height. Now step step one foot forward and rock. Now, let's step the front foot back, and we'll rock on the other side. Now we'll go back to even stance. Now here's where we get uh, departing from Tai Chi Ball. Alternating. Backward circular flying. See fingers drop, wrist relaxed. Then wrist kind of sinks this way and the fingers lift. This all very relaxed. No tension. Okay, so breathing. One way to breathe is inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Okay, that makes it nice and slow. We're doing one breath cycle on each uh, circle of each hand. In, out, in, out. Now rocking, step one foot forward. And with the rocking patterns, when the, I'm trying to generalize as broadly as I can here, when the arms are going this way, forward and backward, you have two choices. One is same side forward, okay? So same arm, same leg forward. And the other is opposite side. Opposite hand, opposite knee forward, okay? Opposite hand, opposite knee forward gives you a nice opportunity to twist. Not the knees twist, but the qua. And so that's also nice for the inguinal uh, 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 and lymph node areas in here as you can twist very nicely if you do opposite knee, opposite hand forward. 
but please confine the twisting to the waist and quad. Don't let the knees twist. So another way of breathing here, inhale, exhale, in, out. So that's one half a breath on each circle. Each hand circle has one half a breath. And sliding the front foot back and setting up our pattern of opposite hand, opposite knee forward. Stepping back to even stance, gradually reducing the size of the circles. And switching to left and right flying. Again, now yin and yang on the white crane flying boom. Boom. So you can breathe in either direction. I like inhale, exhale. It just feels like it's helping to clean out the lungs if I do it that way. This is the only white crane flying movement where we bring the hands over the head above the shoulders. I'll try to show you here a wave starting at the root, moving up and feeding into the movement that lifts the arms. So starting at the bottoms of the feet, wave coming up the body, and finally transferring all the way up to the fingertips. Now, if you're inhaling on the way up, you get to here, you feel the air up here in the top part of the lungs. To me, that feels like the top part of the lungs are getting a nice cleaning out that maybe they aren't used as much as, say, the middle of the lungs. But again, that could just be my breathing pattern. Gradually, we reduce the size of the movement. And we switch to um, straight backwards flying. So straight backwards flying looks like this. Now, straight backwards flying has two waves. So there's the vertical wave coming up from the root that we also saw in the previous movement. And now there's a horizontal wave going out from the center of the chest to each wing tip. So vertical wave then feeds into horizontal wave and your whole body is connected.
this one, we can also step forward. And rock. So there's two ways of rocking, right? One is you're going to go forward, and then the arms are going to go backward, like this, right? Really opens up the chest, okay? The other way is you're going to go forward, and then backward like this. Be careful, don't lean back too much, okay? So, tuck the buttocks under. You do it this way. For me, I like this pattern of chest thrusting forward with the weight shift forward. And step up even, gradually reduce the size of the movements. But even as the movements get smaller and smaller, you still have the whole body connected. You still have two waves working in coordination. And finally, we come to a stop. All right. If you were doing four gates breathing, or grand circulation with the white crane, you should take a minute or two to bring your chi back to your lower dantian. Just place your mind in your lower dantian. Remember, two inches below the navel, on that level, in the center of your lower abdomen. Hold your mind gently and steadily there. As you inhale and exhale, you can use return to childhood breathing to further cool down your body. This is the way we should always end our Tai Chi and Qigong practice, particularly when we've been circulating the Qi. To gather the Qi at its residence in the lower Dante, and so it can be stored and preserved for future use. Ah. <sighs>